work with. And y'all made me feel welcome at home from every time I came up on both of you. And I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to see if anyone would like to uh, play a part in the scripture. If you don't have to, do a prayer. But we like to always uh, get the union involved when we go together. Uh, invite you do a scripture or a prayer. All right, all right. So we thank you. We'll get you to pray. Um, and I'll and uh, I get I'll go ahead and read the scripture to start us off, and and I'll just sing a little song right before, after I read the scripture and you pray. Okay. We're going to Psalms uh, twenty-three. My number Psalms. Uh, most of the time, people kind of use this as funeral service, but it's very encouraging scripture to me as well. Uh, just when I'm going through situations in life that I don't always understand how to handle or things that get tough. Uh, so I use it as a scripture because uh, um, I, we need to remember who God is and that he is the Lord of our life. Uh, the scripture, Psalm 23, says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside the still water. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thou rod, thou staff, that comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so thank you. And, and, and as we sing just a couple of verses of uh, this little light of mine, y'all know it. And then uh, so he'll, he'll come and give us a prayer. You come right. uh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Sorry, you come. Okay, Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come before you to uh, spend a little bit of time with our, our brothers and uh, sisters in the military. Uh, everything that we do, we owe to you, Father. Everything that we are the opportunities that we have you put before us father we thank you for those opportunities we thank you for the opportunity each day to get up with breath in our lungs yes so that we can do better the next day father and we just ask that you place your hedge of protection around the men and women of this great great country and yes lord father just be with us in all that we do we ask these Things in your precious holy name. Amen. 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 And so thank you so much. And once again, thank you, Captain Marlon, for allowing us to have the opportunity. And at this time, I'm going to uh, bring up uh, Chaplain Hurt. Uh, so he's going to be taking the transition. I'm, I'm moving on to the third night, and he's coming uh, to the 871st, and, and he's going to be the chaplain. So I'd like to give him a few words uh, so that he not only could greet uh, 224, but also uh, the rest of the battalion uh, in just give them something inspiration to look forward to. Thank you. Well, hello everyone. Um, I am a uh, uh, soon to be chaplain candidate coming your way to be assigned as your chaplain. I'm super, super excited about the opportunity. I um, uh, couldn't be more excited um, in, in this transition. I, uh, you know, You'll notice a little, I'm, where I'm a little bit unusual because I'm doing a, a branch transfer 
And uh, it's because there's nothing I want more right now than the opportunity to be able to invest into people. I don't think that there's anything more important than investing into eternal things. And the only thing we have that's eternal outside of God on this planet is people. And being a longtime soldier, my favorite people in this world are soldiers. So I'm just um, absolutely excited about this opportunity where I get to uh, invest into you and uh, love on you and encourage you. So um, we will share my contact information. Please don't hesitate to call me for absolutely uh, anything that you need. Um, I have some really big shoes to fill. Uh, Chaplain uh, Parham is an incredible chaplain. And I think if I can do half as good as he's been doing, that uh, you and I, we're going to be all right. And I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. I'd like to, oh, real quick, thing, we're going to the Word of God. I'd like to open with a uh, word of prayer uh, as I move into the Scripture. And I thank, uh, thank you, First Sergeant right Hill, for allowing us to engage your soldiers today. Uh, real quickly, uh, Second Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy, uh, the 16th verse, it says in 2 Timothy, the 16th verse, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions, and in righteousness. And then 17 says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And I want to use for a thought if God would give us just a few minutes of time, um, the compass that helps us accomplish. The compass that helps us accomplish. And definitely the word of God in similitude to the compass that we use here in the military. Uh, it helps us to get to the destination and, and complete every task that is assigned to our lives. And so just like in the military, it allows us to have accomplished in order to get from one place to another the compass to mission, God has given us his compass in the word of God to help us maneuver through life to accomplish the mission for him. And so today, we, we need God. We need his word. And the rest of all the time, the COVID-19 and all the things that we've seen on TV and all the things that is challenging uh, our life today, we need God. We need to be strengthened. And so that, so that's, that's strength and that's hope in God. God would give us what we need in order to accomplish the mission for him. Everything that God has placed in your life to do, God will not only just call you to do it, but he'll equip you to it. And I thank God today, just like the many things that we have in the military that use us to keep the compass of mission, one of the greatest assets, amen, is the compass. Amen. amen. And the word of God is our compass as believers in him that helps us through this journey. Uh, I want to point out some few points in it. The navigation. Navigation. Not only when you're navigating, the compass lets you find out where you are. It helps you to find out true north. And that's what the Bible does for us. It helps us reveal the truth about who we are. It helps us to understand that where we're located in, in our life with God. The Bible reveals who you are. And so it's a mirror. It shows us a reflection of ourselves and how weak we are and how much we need God guide. And I know if you take me out here now and just put me out in the, the beautiful uh, hills here uh, in Marshall, I would be lost. Without a compass, I wouldn't know where I'm going. But if you put this in my hand, amen, a compass, somewhere down the line, I can, I can gain by, uh, where I am. I can find where I need to go, and I can get there. And that's what the Bible does for us. It helps us in our navigation through life while we're trying to go with God. And not only that, so we understand that we need the Bible because it's our navigation to it, but also we understand that the Bible teaches us direction. This compass, when you put it, it'll point you in the right direction. I need this for navigation of where I'm going and where I, to find out where I am now. But it also will give me direction on pointing me in the right way to go. Really, so I can go, if I desire to go north, go higher, then it will help me go that direction. And so we thank God the word of God is there. If you want to go high in your life and do greater things for God, the Bible will show you and point you in the direction you need to go. 
You carry it along with you. So take the Bible with you. And so, uh, uh, child boy, I can't take the Bible everywhere with me uh, physically, but you can put it in your heart. Amen. You can put it on your phone. You can put it in your pocket. Get your word of God. Small testament to take with you. But also the best place is to put it in your heart. The word of God can dwell inside of your heart and lead you and guide you and give you direction to heal while you're living on earth. And not only it helps you get direction from one destination to point you where you need to go, but also it'll help you with recommendation. The compass will recommend. It won't make you go there. It just tells you you're off path. And so you hey, you need to get back on path. It's not gonna make you do it. It's just gonna recommend you off course. And that's what the Bible does. It recommends us. When we read it, we recommend us that you are off course. Get back on track. But if we have to make up our mind and our heart, yes, I'm going to follow what God is giving us or what the military has given us so that we can arrive safely to the, de the destination that God has for us. If not, hey amen, the Bible is not going to make you. You got to say, I trust it enough. I trust God enough that I'm going to follow his will and follow his way. So I can accomplish the task that God has made for us. So understand, it recommends to us. But we got to receive it, believe it, trust it, and walk in. And so not only that, we understand just like the compass in the Bible to have something great together is it'll give you correction. Not only will it recommend, but if you take the recommendation of it, you'll get back on the correct path. And sometimes I've been there, I've been in uniform, I been out walking uh, in infantry. Now I'm going back to the infantry, and I'm sure enough, I'm a little rusty. And sometimes I get off course. I get turned around, disoriented. I thought I saw something, that said, and I don't know about you. Sometimes I, I think I'm a good obstacle guy, and I'll, I'll look at the company. I say, yeah, but I see I'm trying to do all these terrain features based on experience, and 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 sometimes what I thought was a a a a spur wasn't. And I missed the mark, but my compass will help me get back on the right track when I when I make a mistake. And so it helps me for correction. So that's what the Bible talks about, uh, reproof. It lets you know, uh-uh. No, you got to get it together. This is not the right way. So it helps us with correction on this journey in life. And that's what we need to buy. Just as in a military uniform, we, we need to have a good compass when we're moving from one place to another. And then next to understand the, the destination. If you got a good compass, if you follow it, you'll reach, reach your destination. God has a mission and a compass and a goal that he desires all of us to do in our life. The Bible helps us to reach the destination. And all of us as a believer understand that this life is not our home. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. And one of these days, we hope to receive eternal glory. Well, while we're here, I need this navigation. I need this Bible to help me through the weeds and, and the troubles and the, and the stumps and the, the walls that I might, the thickest that I might encounter. But if I stay strong with, in his word, believe it, let that be my God, then I can make it home toward heaven. So the, the Bible is helping us to get to our final destination. And so three points. Uh, number one, if you don't have a compass, get it. One, get you a good compass. Uh, get you a good, good, good compass. If you don't have a good Bible, get you a good Bible. Get you a good study tool so that you can be able to have the Word of God readily available for you on this journey. Number two, learn it. Now, it, it, it doesn't do you really a, a whole lot of good when you have a compass and you don't know how to use it. You got it all turned the wrong way trying to go. You, you got to have it the right direction. So we have to learn it. Learn how to use it. Learn what the, the, the dollars for. Learn that you can measure some things with it. Learn that you can draw straight lines with it. Learn how to use your compass. So we have to learn how to use our body if we're going to make it. And then number three, follow. No good to get it. No good to learn it. And then turn around and ignore it. We got to be willing to follow it. And if we follow it, we can't go wrong with God. Then my feature word, and we'll close out, is word. The word of God is our compass. It's the word, W-O-R-D. The feature word is an acronym 
that God has taught me through the military about the acronym. The word W is for us worth it. It's worth having the word of God in your life. It's there for inspiration and encouragement. Yes, it's there for rebuke, correcting them. But it will give us strength in a time of need. The O is for it'll help you overcome anything that you face in this life. God has the answer. And it's written in his word. Whatever you face, you can be more than a conqueror and overcome through Christ Jesus, his word. The R is for not only that, different from this physical comfort, the word of God has a tendency to restore and refresh. It helps your mind refresh. Help your spirit refresh. It helps your heart refresh. Gives you rest and relaxation. It gives you a peace of mind. My God can keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on thee. And so we trust the word of God. We follow his word. And then unlike the physical comfort, our word of God is deed is for divine. It gives us a divine connection with our maker and our creator. So God can speak into our heart. And so if you want to know God in a great way, follow his comfort, his word, because it has divine connection. Amen? amen and amen and amen. So we need the comfort. And the Bible is the real comfort that we need on this journey. Amen? amen. Thank God for you. Come on, give God a hand to pray. And so I thank you for spending your time with me. It's been a pleasure serving here with you guys. And I know God is going to do some greater through every soldier that is connected to not only the 871st, but also to this 224. Sergeant Hill, it's been a pleasure. Likewise. Captain Miles, it's been a pleasure. Sergeant Hill, it's been a pleasure. Sergeant Ragman, amen. It's been a pleasure. And so I'd like to close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to be able to share and serve with your soldiers. We ask God that you continue to keep this unit in your care, keep this battalion in your care, continue to cover and guide them. Let their families be blessed, allow their finances to be blessed, allow their health to be blessed. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. As Chaplain Hills comes in, God, and, and God, you move me to a different assignment. We ask that you'll be with both of us and give us what we need. Continue to bless Lieutenant Colonel Wheeler, his staff, God, and the staff here at 224 and all over the 871st. So we give you glory and we give you honor. We pray after this drill, God, that each soldier will make it home safe and sound and find their home better than what they left it. And so we appreciate you and everything that you're doing. Please cover, give us grace and relief from this COVID. We know that you're able to cover our families and as well as cover us through it. We just ask that you'll bless God, the United States. Continue to let peace move and let everything fall back in line in order under your will and your guidance for this nation. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Are you getting into promotion? Where are you going? Uh, yes, that's.